Hello everyone, um, welcome to the channel. It's been a tough 10 minutes trying to get onto live, but the thing is we haven't been able to get live because YouTube just blocked me from streaming, live streaming, because it didn't like my title, Bol Boris's recovery plan live stream. So they blocked it for 24 hours. Is that a new policy Facebook and YouTube and has done? Is, is that a new policy? Is that a new policy? But so I'll leave the screens that way, but it's designed so I can put this onto my other social media platforms too. So I can actually make this better for people. Is that better? No, that, that just turned the camera on, sorry. Um, yes, so the plan is to react to Boris's Bollocks opening plan. Now I've had a new haircut, we've changed a few things. I haven't actually made content in a while. And there's a reason for that. Reason I've not put any content up is because I've been having three weeks to, you know, calm my brain down and see how things are gonna go. And basically, I actually got really angry from hearing what I was listening to Bollocks today. Because it was literally fucking bollocks. And today we're going to be reacting to his 7 p.m. There it is. 7 p.m. But it's 7.10 because he's slow. Don't know why, but he probably is for some reason. And it says the recovery plan for what's going on. And it has been bollocks. The fact that we're going to end up getting vaccine passports. I haven't talked about the coof or the the vaccine passports or that because it's fucking annoys me a lot and I'm not a guy who's pissed reacting like this because I've got a Costa I don't watch her on the TV because who actually wants to watch the TV these days without getting propaganda of some kind from the mainstream media sources because actually as far as I'm aware we were actually doing really well but then again I forget we're not doing a joint strategy where we join England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland all come out of this together in the more preferred strategy, let alone a few other things, it's now the idea that we should do our own separate things and don't end up like what happened last year. Now, I've got variations of views about what happened last year, like, right? and I never talked about them because it was getting really really stressful to figure out what the fuck I'm supposed to think about all this. And now, we've got a plan to get out of here. We've got a plan. We've got some plan. It's do everything you can without doing fucking anything at all. It's fucking genius. I love it. It's like you have no fucking plan at all, is it? And I'm a guy who's wearing sunglasses who looks like a bloody Nazi. King. <laughs> Honest to fucking God. It's like, what kind of plan is getting ready here? And, like, seriously, I'll go into politics if I have to, but I'm not doing it because I want to. It's because somehow you guys just can't handle yourselves and somehow make the job better. Let alone if we end up at war with China eventually. Oh, bollocks in charge. You need someone stronger than any MP you have right now. But that's not the point. The, po the point today is the act to what's been going on with the lockdowns. And I'm not going to call by its name because it's going to get highlighted as an NHS thing. So please don't highlight that below with the, you know, coof name or the Coca-Cola virus because, you know, white supremacy, yay. And, well, we're going to react to what Boris has got to say because we only heard some of it. I know he's going to be doing it again on this video. I know he's basically just going to repeat himself. So, yeah. Let's get angry. Yeah, and do this really unencouraging. But I'm going to be facing the camera towards him so you can get my reaction at the same time. Because I couldn't get on the laptop. Blocked for 24 fucking hours. You can't get your live stream going. You're blocked for 24 hours. I've only got 10 subscribers. But at least Instagram is letting me do it. And this is where it's coming from. So annoying. But let's go and react to Bollus. Because <laughs> I think I think I'm insane. I think I've gone Joker insane. But let's go and react to Bollus here. Uh how how am I gonna do this? 
Is that going to be better? I don't know. I, I can't figure this out. Um, I don't know. Like, what base, which way is going to be better to do this? Like that? Or like that? I don't know. Nah, I'm going to put it on to Bolas. I'm just going to react to him. Okay? Well, let's go. Thank you much for joining us. Our extraordinary NHS has now succeeded in vaccinating more than 17.7 million people across the UK. And nearly a year after this pandemic began, this unparalleled national effort has decisively shifted the odds in our favour. Really? So that we no longer have to rely simply on lockdowns and uh, restricting our behaviour and putting our lives on hold. But with every day that goes by, this programme of vaccination is creating a shield around the entire population. Like everyone who has had it becomes immune and then everyone who gets the vaccine. So technically, from your own logic, you should be allowed to do whatever you want now. But he's not going to say that, is he? I mean, that's what you sound like he's going to say. But just wait for him to continue, because this is just going to be something else. It will. It'd be like, oh, look, we basically gave ourselves a chance to do what we want. Yes, because you said as soon as you get the vaccines, you should be okay. Like, basically, you should get the vaccines and you should be fine. And it's like, okay, well, that, that's enough then. So, what's the fucking problem? Because he, they want the control. And he has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Listen. Which means that we're now travelling on a one-way road to freedom. And we can begin... <laughs> you, you heard how he said that? One trip load to freedom. Freedom, a thing that we have to sacrifice everything, get locked in jail, and tra five, travel five miles before getting a fine. That kind of freedom. And you know what's also annoying about this freedom thing? It's only fucking England. Because we've all got to do our separate things. If we all did it at the same time, it would be different. The infection rates would go down, or whatever kind of term you want to use. It would all go down, would it not? Would everything not be going down at the same time because everyone's not doing their own ways? Although England is the worst one because it's the biggest population and the biggest place. I'm still getting my own time to say this stuff. But don't worry, there's going to be videos about this soon. Don't worry. And it looks like we're still alive, so we're not too bad. I do forgive Solly for everyone who has to watch it this kind of way. But I've, I've tried to make it best as I can. So let's go. Safe restart our lives and do it with confidence and I want to be frank about exactly what that means and the trade-offs involved the vaccines reduce the danger of COVID they save lives and they keep people out of hospital but no vaccine against any disease has ever been 100% effective so whenever we ease the lockdown whether it's today or in six or nine months we've got to be realistic and accept that there will be more infections, more hospitalizations, and therefore, sadly, more deaths, just as there are every year with flu. Even if we... Oh, yeah, what happened to flu again? Oh, the eight. Co the Coca-Cola virus does not exist, right? Because, like, because the flu doesn't exist. Sorry, that's not what I meant. The flu doesn't exist anymore, right? Because the flu, cancer, all these people died from the coof. The Coca-Cola virus. Of course, that's what killed them. Because it wasn't any other disease. As long as you were infected before you died, it was the result of that. It's almost people have forgotten the real way of killing people. It's almost they've forgotten. But what do I know? I'm just a fucking idiot, am not I? I'm supposed to go along with this shit. Moving on. We sustained the lockdown indefinitely which would uh, itself cost lives and do immeasurable harm to our children, we would not be able to eradicate this disease. And that's why it's right gradually to replace the protection afforded by the lockdown with the protection of the vaccines. And our approach is to move with the utmost care and advancing 
in four steps, each with a minimum of five weeks apart, so we can properly judge the impact of each relaxation before we move on. And you can see the details of all of this on gov.uk. And we'll be led at every stage by day. Is this the one where you actually got told that how many people died from the vaccine? 300 people? I know they're dead, I'm sorry. But the fact is, 300 people died, that's not a fucking lot of people. I'm sorry. I know they died, but ONS and government statistics end up coming out with those numbers for direct involved in the virus, not this 22,000. Like, I'm sorry, if it was like that, we might as well start shooting people. But, may I guess. We're not even told what half of this is yet. Data, not dates, and we will apply four tests. The pace of the vaccination programme, the effectiveness of the vaccines, the pressure on the NHS, and the risks of any new variants of COVID. And therefore, as we look at the data today, I can confirm that two weeks from today, Monday the 8th of March, we will begin step one. And schools and colleges across England will reopen and teaching in classrooms can start again. We knew that from the start. We knew that because the media kept going at people saying, Oh, you must go back to school. You must go back to school. You must go back to school. What would you think the boss would do first? Go back to school. Oh my God. Yeah, but now they're doing 8th of March. I mean, that's probably the first bit of good news of the whole thing. But the thing is, it doesn't make sense. We knew that kids didn't really contract it as much. Half the schools in America was going back to normal. Everyone in Sweden was going back to normal. But we just decided to keep our children inside and less educated and dumb enough to not think for themselves. Because it's hard. It's hard for people to keep this under the laps. And it's like, only a few more weeks. Two more weeks. People have to forced to stay with their kids in the home. I mean, people aren't already on the straining bolt as it is. People are already losing their shit. It's not like this is not happening. People are losing it. It's like, ah, this is like the worst <laughs> lively action I could do. Because this is like weeks and weeks of information I literally could say to people, but I never know how to say it properly, you know? But the colleges in that, Finally, you decided to put them back to normal. Great. I didn't think of this one before because this could have happened ages ago because we knew from the studies that, uh, even government studies saying that the colleges and unis and the schools were less likely to contract it because they had the standards, including the pubs and the bars and restaurants because they were more COVID safe than the fucking care homes were. It's always like that all the time. It's only took a year for them to figure that fucking out. It's almost unlike, like that fucking stupid or something. All the evidence shows that schools are safe and the risk posed to children by COVID is vanishingly small. But to offer even greater reassurance, we're introducing twice weekly testing of secondary school and college pupils and asking them to wear face coverings for the rest of this term. And don't be surprised if the face covering thing doesn't end till 2025 or when Bill Gates decides to make his own new virus because he's always said there's a new virus coming. So the, we have to do mass testing. Just saying. The masks aren't going away anytime soon. Or the muzzles. I call them muzzles because they are. They're muzzles. They're the strain you from what you say and you can't hear what each other's saying, even if you're partner. Even yesterday I saw two people kissing with masks on. Such sane people. Students on practical courses can return to university, but all others will need to continue learning online and will review the situation before the end of the Easter holidays. We will allow breakfast and after school clubs to restart and among other changes on March the 8th, you'll be able to have a coffee on a bench or a picnic in a park with one person outside your household. Oh my god! Oh my god! The fucking sanity! And I could go to a vending machine and get one myself. Crazy. And anyway. So, oh my god, we can get to do all this stuff again! Oh my god! Oh my god! 
don't care. It's like, that's the bare minimum. Like, you could do that anyway. All you had to do was get it from somewhere else. We're already seeing the bullshittily in this, aren't we? Wow. And because we know how stressful this time has been and how people yearn to see friends and family, if only fleetingly, we will now go further. And on the 29th of March, you can meet more of your friends and family outside, including in gardens, either as two households or subject to the rule of six. Fuck off. You're trying to tell me we have to stay in like this for another seven weeks before we get to see our family and friends again. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me right now? You're, you're trying to tell me we have to keep this going for another few weeks. People are losing their shit now. Suicides hit the top of the records first time in 20 odd years now. Now. You should be allowing people to be seeing their families and friends before they decide to fucking slut themselves before then. So the, the kids can go back, but the adults in the middle, oh yeah, we, we definitely care about them. There's a plan. There's definitely a plan. But as long as all the suicides get uh, resulted as coof deaths, we're fine. We're, I'm all they fucking annoyed. Jesus Christ. And then we'll go on to step two, which is no earlier than the 12th of April. And this is a big moment. So that's a whole another week after that. A week in a bit? April. Okay. So that's supposed to be step two before... What's this one? Shops will return and reopen hairdressers, nail salons will reopen, pubs and restaurants will all be able to serve customers outside, precisely because we know that outside the risk of transmission is lower. And we also know that a transmission from inside those places is impossible too, because we have studies for that. We have a whole years of studies in from the bar associations, the hairdress associations, all telling you that this would never work inside. So are we supposed to, like, let's hope April isn't covered with snow. It's like, oh yeah, at least you can go out to the bar, but you know how much percentage bars can actually do their services outside? 12%, 12%, because we know every bar and restaurant, the ones that actually need to be the most looked after, the ones that are basically on thin ice, need to get their businesses inside. It's great when you can get your business outside, but most pubs and businesses can only run from the inside. Most places can't make food for themselves. So when you get the food options out there, they can try, but it won't work. But if you're a big established restaurant, great. And you've got a big bar to it, great. But the thing is, I can't see that working. Because you know why? They would all be dead. If, if, if any of them surviving by then, on the fucking scraps of food they have left, you're going to see a bunch of scrapping lats fighting for the last bit of cash, or just die. Businesses will just die. It's like, oh, great. Great. If anyone's actually got a letter to, like, to the MP, do it now. And your mayor elections are going to screw you over. And I'm suggesting do not vote for these guys. Vote for anyone else except for the SNP, Labour, Lib Dems, or the Tories. Vote for some independents that actually might have some independent thought. It's the fucking idea. I haven't gone into the political scheme yet, but maybe get the independents. Nigel Farage's party seems to be one of the least encouraging for lockdowns. So maybe support him. Just saying. Fucking hint. What a stupid plan. Anyway. And then five weeks after that, no earlier than May the 17th. Five fucking weeks. Oh, wow. We'll go to step three and open all our hospitality sector to service indoors. Pub right. So that's fucking worse. That's even worse. And it was before. So I get myself straight there. So the businesses that's on there, I think it's 12 or 13 or 20% of the restraints, 
that they already have for being inside, they have to wait another five weeks to get their insides open. That's if they survive. That's what I meant by the survival thing. If they survive for that long and then that happens, good fucking luck to you. I mean, I know you're resilient for like the whole year, but fuck me. Like, where the hell are these people going to get the money from? Is the furlough going to continue? Like, you need to allow them to do some sort of businesses because some businesses don't have the outside places to go. But then the thing is... Sorry. This is England. Because Scotland probably doesn't have this. When's Jimmy Clanky going to help us? Or Kim John Nicola? Anyway, fuck me. Bars, restaurants, along with hotels and cinemas, and subject to capacity limits, we will also open sports stadia, concert halls, and theatres. Great. So, the people that really do not fly from this the most, like, I mean, they get the hospitality sector, but people need hotels. I mean, we've had enough of people trying to come in on dinghy boats and getting three fucking hotels. Is that what I have to do? Go on a dinghy boat, go to the West Coast, and then I'll get a hotel for three weeks. And I'll get a flea vaccine too, yeah? Ah. Uh, like, I'm sorry. From when you heard this on the radio, this sounded really good. This does sound perfect. And then, oh yeah. Phase four. <laughs> Finally, provided we continue to pass the four tests, then from the 21st of June, we will go to step four and say goodbye to most remaining restrictions. Resuming... Most. Hear that? Most. <laughs> but you've still got to wear your muzzles, keep your two meters and everything else. Oh, I'm losing my shit so much. Large-scale events like business conferences, and football matches, lifting the limits on weddings, and reopening nightclubs. All of these steps will apply in England, and the government will continue to do whatever it takes to protect jobs and livelihoods across our whole United Kingdom for the duration of the pandemic. And I know there are some who would like to accelerate the timetable. I know, of course... Well... I would say so myself, because this seems to be quite destructive of what we could do. Five weeks between every single one. That's if we can get the set, the, the R down. That's if we can do other things. That's if we can do other things. You know what? Why don't we just lock down everyone? Why don't you just not open businesses at this rate? This is way too slow. And I thought this was good. Because I literally had an argument with my mother about this. And she was actually really willing for the vaccine passports, which I hope he mentions, because, oh man, what? How slippery of a slope can we go in before papers please comes in? Check port passports from England to Scotland. Like Jimmy Clanky has already wanted to do this, because England's the bad guy all of a sudden. Because they've got a better economy. Because they've got a better economic structure. And plus they're the power holders down there. They hold all the keys. But we should be doing everything at the same time with all the other parts. I can, The schools are probably the most important ones right now. But then you say that, you're not making things easier. I can explain this in another video. I will. But this... Is a shitty strategy, and I want to go over this out of a live stream. This is absolutely pathetic, but let's just fucking continue, because I've, I've, my brain's getting fizzled up here. Anytime. There are others who would like to be more cautious and stay in the slow lane. And I understand. Both stay in the slow lane? We'd ever get rid of this, like, fucking two years ago, mate. I sympathize because levels of infection are still high and we must strike a very careful balance and always accept that we've got to be humble in the face of nature but also we must accept that we cannot persist indefinitely 
with restrictions that have separated families and loved ones for too long, threatened the livelihoods of millions, kept pupils out of school. That is just complete bullshit. That is bullshit. That makes no sense at all. That made no sense. How? Oh, we want to not keep families separated. What did you do at Christmas time? You basically came up there and said, oh, look, look at all this. Look at all that. And then he was like, oh, oh well, we'll just lock down everyone. That's fine. Like, okay. <laughs> what a joke. Honestly, what what joke of a system this is. What? It's thanks to the rollout of these vaccinations, many of them pioneered in this country, that the balance of that judgment is now changing in our favour. Well, that should mean we should be allowed to do this a lot quicker than every five weeks, no? Every five weeks should be quite long enough for everyone to do something. I know he said four weeks, but... Five weeks sounds like the one that we're going to do. Because if we're just going to keep going the same way we're going, we're going to be fucked, mate. We're going to be screwed over. What do I know? I'm just a fucking idiot on YouTube. And thanks to the vaccinations, that there is light ahead. Leading us to a spring and a summer, which I think will be seasons of hope, looking and feeling incomparably better for us all and from which we will not go back. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask Chris to do the slides. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, oh, so great. This tit. Um, this slide, uh, which is familiar, I think, to anyone who's watched the, these, uh, these press conferences, shows the number of people testing positive for COVID-19 in the UK. Uh, and as you can see, there are essentially two things to take away from this. The first of which is that the number testing positive has fallen and is continuing to fall. Are we not getting to see this and chart? The second is that the rates are still very high. Are we not allowed to see this chart? At, uh, over 11, and I'm not watching this on the BBC, on by the way. Who the hell? I'm watching off the sun. Next slide, please. Are we not getting to see this? Similarly, when we look at the number of people in hospital really? with COVID. Uh, in the We're not getting to see this. Again, you can see there is a significant fall that is continuing but the rates are still high and they're only slightly below the height of the first peak we had last year. So definitely things are heading in the right way, but remain uh, at a high level. Next slide, please. Uh, and then uh, if we look at the number of people who have sadly died with uh, following a positive test result. Following a positive test. These are also falling. And the most recent seven day average is 480 deaths uh, a day. Oh, shut up. Uh, so still... Fine. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Bullshit. Fuck off. Sorry, I've had enough of this shit. That's that's basically it. I'm, I, that's all I wanted to say. I just, all I wanted to watch was Boris's bit because Chris just shut up. It's like, if you're not even going to allow us to all see this one unless you have to look at the BBC, fuck off. We all need to watch this too. Sorry, we all need to watch these results. But the thing is, that just sounds like the complete bullshit. And people are calling them out on this too. Because I believe when I was looking at the live stream, like how much people are liking and disliking this? Ah, there is a significant drop. Look at that. Can I? 321 to 205. And wow. But that is a... Uh... It's going to look bad because we already saw on the independent these numbers were drastically different because people are hating this right now and they are absolutely hating it and i'm leading the comments here should return to yeah and it's it's this is all determined on if we can sorry if we can actually determine this on the amount of infection rates now it's like okay that makes sense the infection rates but the thing is when did we ever look at a virus in any history or at any time apart from last year and we looked at every reason the lockdown to quarantine to shoot the infected of any sort of situation? When did we avoid the death counts? Should we not be in worried about CDC official study that says 99.9 .9 survival rate apart from the Odd percent of people who do die from it. 
Then, but this country isn't healthy. It's must. It's overly sixty percent obese, which is more likely the chance you would die. And the more people are kept inside, it's the more chance there was increase of deaths because they were fat. Sorry, just a bit obese or obese or fat or whatever. And you know what? I give up. I mean, I haven't gave up as much as to not kill myself. Jesus Christ. You're going to have to take a lot to kill me like that. But the only way I would ever have to go is to get shot down by some individual deep state SWAT team and has to take me down. That's all it is. And you might think I'm crazy, but he never mentioned anything about passports. And it might be after this, I don't know. But you know what? Oh, uh, fuck. We're screwed. I mean, I don't know how Scotland's going to do this. I don't know if they're going to announce when we're going to do this. Because the only thing uh, King John Nicola actually suggested, because I'm Scottish, by the way, I live up in Scotland, uh, is on how this is going to work, is if, you know, if we all do this at the same time, because it should all work. But again, again, no one is getting their cancer treatment done. No one is getting their... You know, other things sorted. I had a a blood in my bladder. I haven't gone in the fucking places because I want to continue working and not catch the damn virus. Because I they say, oh, it's infectious now. Oh, it's infectious. It's infectious. Oh, my God. Uh, yes, it's like the green flu from the fucking Division games. Well, the only thing is that thing actually can kill you. Like, properly kill you. And it's like, you know what? Bogus to this lockdown. Thank you for anyone who did watch this video to the very end. I am not a big fan of what's going on. I want to explain this further, but you can do that by listing my little reasons. I am going to be making more content, more controllably, because I can... My variations of views have changed a lot, okay? They've changed a lot for the last three weeks about what I've had to do, what I've had to think, and what I've to say. So when I do those main videos first, we can, you know, think of something of how we can make this better. Because I want to make this brand a lot more, right? I want to make this brand a lot more than it is. I want to live stream. I want to talk to people. I want to hear people's opinions. Like, I want to maybe do um, Alex Benfield or something like that or Hodge Twins or Stephen Crowder. Like, I want to make this worth something. Same to you as well. We, if we work together, this can work together and make better. And if it actually turns the situation where I have to become a president or a United States, you know, president or UK prime minister, you guys fucked up too much. You fucked up too much times. And that's just a warning. But I want to say thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you subscribe to the channel and like this video, even if you didn't like it. Just like it anyway, so the algorithm shows the people that might like this video what they think. So thank you guys for watching this video, and see you on the other side, if there is one. Thank you. Bye.